2 Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 up to 4 You are greeted in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 up to 4 I want you there is a day that we we prayed about restoring the restoration of the first love. And since that day, I never had peace. God has been telling me that, tell my children about this. So I want us to read Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 up to 4. And that's NIV. Let me get it on, on New King James. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these things, say, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles, and they are not. And you have found them liars. And you have persevered, and you have patience. And have labored for my name's sake. And have not become weary. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. This is, these are the words of Jesus himself. He is commanding the church of Ephesus. Ephesus was an economic hub then. It was the hub of activities because there was a port there. All the ships used to dock in Ephesus. Every merchant ship used to dock there. So it was an economic hub. The church in Ephesus was one of the mega churches then. They were known for doing a lot of things. They were known for their labor. They served. They turned the city upside down with their weight. They were known for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said to them, I know your labor. In other words, he's commending their good works. That you are a good church. You are doing great. You are evangelizing. You are winning souls. And also say, I know your patience. You are not short tempered. You are patient with those who have received me. You are patient even when things are, when things are not going right. You are patient. He's commanding them. Jesus Christ saying, I see all those works. And he say, because they were rooted in the doctrine of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were able to see even those who were evil. There was, uh, in other verses, in other uh, versions, they speak about the, Nicol the Nicolothians. Nicolaitans was one of the apostles who bastardized the word of God, who approved of sexual immorality in the church, who thought that it was okay, but the church of Ephesus was also known for resisting him. They resisted him and his doctrines. And also, he said you have also 
tested the, the apostles. There were those who came with false doctrine. And the church of Ephesus disproved them. said, no, we don't know you. What you are preaching is not the word of God. So the church of Ephesus, we can say in today's word, was a perfect church. They were doing everything right. Baptizing the new converts. Leading the, the, the Bible says, if you can read the history of the church of, of Ephesus, it said, the church was scattered in every household. Every household knew that there was a time for praying. In other words, they had one of the strongest cells groups in the church of their time. And the Bible says, Jesus Christ saying, you have persevered. It is one of the churches that were attacked a lot. Reason B, in Ephesus, the whole city worshipped a god called Diana. And the god called Diana, there were people who used to make sculptures. They made a lot of money through those sculptures. Because people will worship, will come, will go to the marketplace and buy those sculptures and, and put them in their houses because they believe in that idol. But the church persevered. It never lost courage. It persevered. That's why Jesus Christ says, for my name's sake, you have not become weary. But in verse 4, Jesus Christ made a sudden U-turn. He said, nevertheless, I see all your works. I see that you are a prayerful church. You are praying more than any other church in Ephesus. You are laboring in prayer. You are laboring in intercession. You are laboring in giving. You are reading the word of God. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. The first love for who? The first love for Christ. He's saying, everything that is being done is not being done in the name of Jesus. It's not being done in his name. He said, the love that you had for me, I don't see it anymore. So today, I want to talk to you as a church. I want you to remember to go back to your first love. How you reacted when you heard about Christ. The first time that you knew about Christ, you never wanted to hear anything about anyone. All that you needed was to go to church and serve Jesus, not the pastor. Am I talking to someone? All that you needed to do was to go to church. You, you, you know, we are all married. Dear, so some of us are married. You know that the first time you met your wife, the only thing that you did or you met your husband, the only thing that you did, you wanted to spend more time with them. You wanted to hear nothing. You will talk, you will spend hours and hours over. I remember me and Pastor T, I would spend hours over the phone. She used to work night shift. Yabushio. So we'll spend hours and hours over the phone because she'll be at work. I will, I will talk to her. I knew that even if I can wake up 12 o'clock and call her, she's available. So I never got too tired of hearing her voice. But now, today's church, we have a lot of programs. We have a lot of things that we want to accomplish outside the love of Christ. Hallelujah. If we go to Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, you see, in the book of Revelation 2, verse 1 to 4, Jesus Christ is not saying he doesn't acknowledge them. He's not saying he does not acknowledge our works. He's saying, above all this, I need 
due to go back to the first love. What is the first love? The first love is commanded in the Bible. Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. If you can read it. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Today's church is in love with itself. What is it that I've done today? Wow, today I sang so well. Today, Mr. Ngoveni played the piano so well. Today, I, but is your heart sold out for Christ? I want to put it to you. that The, the disciples, before they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, they did not know what true love is. That's why it was easy for Peter to deny Jesus Christ. When they say to him, you are one of the disciples, he said, no. The Bible said he even cursed. But when they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, the disciples were stirred up by the supernatural love of Jesus Christ. Nothing could stop them. Nothing could stop their way. The very same people that Peter denied Jesus Christ before, he stood before them. He asked them a question. Should I respect you, man of God who sent me? Hallelujah. So, I want to put it to you to tonight. Uh, the love of Christ will give you the boldness you need. The love of Christ will give you the healing you need. The love of Christ will give you the deliverance you need. Some of the things don't need us to go anywhere. We just need to go back to the first love. Hallelujah. You see, after the lockdown, the church has become something else. Many people have stopped going to church. Many have gone cold. Many have grown cold. They are claiming that the church is under attack. Yes, you are right. The church is under attack. Let us read Acts eleven nineteen. What happens when the church is under attack? What happens on the church that love Christ? Acts eleven verse nineteen. He said, now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose after Stephen traveled as, after over Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word of God to no one but the Jews only. Check here. 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and great number believed and turned to the Lord. The disciples, by the reason of their love for Christ, they never allowed anything to stand between them and that which God has called them for. The Bible says that in their persecution, they continued to preach the word of God. In other words, even when the church was persecuted, they Stick to the word. They stuck on to the word. They never turned their back to Jesus Christ. The more the persecution, the more their love for Christ was increased. And the more they won more souls for God. I'm telling you, that even in this time of pandemic, it is not the time for the church that loved Christ to have excuses not to do the work of God. 
We, we cannot blame the lockdown. The lockdown is not the reason why you are not going to church. The lockdown is not the reason why you are not reading the Bible. The lockdown is not the reason why you are not praising God. It's, the, it's, the, it's because you have moved from the first love. We don't love God the way we used to. We don't love Jesus Christ the way we used to. I want to put it to you. We all know this. When I was a young man, still dating, the moment I felt that I don't need the girl anymore, I will have all the excuses not to see her. I will even lie. My grandmother will die three times. Same person. I'm going to the funeral. My grandmother has died. After a month, you say the same thing. But didn't, didn't she die? Like, no, I mean the grandmother of my grandmother on the other side of my grandmother. You see, we're a big family. So my grandmother's died again. So I can't spend time with you this weekend. No, why? It is, it, when love is dead, you give birth to excuses. Am I talking to someone? When love is dead, you give birth to what? So, uh, you know, there is a lady by, name, by the, the name of Nancy DeMoss. She, 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 she put down a list of things. Before I can go straight to, uh, deep into the word, to put down a list, she put down a, a beautiful list of things that you should know that your love for Christ is dead. Number one, she said, you, you can go for hours and days without thinking about spending time with Jesus Christ. You wake up in the morning. Your day is fine. You just want to continue with everything else except Jesus Christ. You, you, you don't even want to respect Hebrews 10.25. He said, not forgetting the, the gathering of saints. You know, when the love of Jesus Christ has grown cold, you don't even the desire to spend time with him dies. It's not there. It's like a, it's like a girl being irritated by the SMS of the man of the boy she, she doesn't love anymore. Whenever you talk about going to church, they frown at you like you have issued a cursed word. I want, to, I want us to do a self-introspection. That whatever that the church is going through right now, I'm, I talk to pastors. They are saying that many Christians need to be kicked out. No. They need to go back to their first love. Hallelujah. We need to go back to the first love. It, and, and she also wrote that you don't have a strong hunger for the word. Bible reading becomes a chore. Something to mark off your to-do list. At least I've read a chapter today. When last did you read the Bible? I read the whole book of Acts this week. You know, I, you know you know, I'm so relieved. Wrong. Wrong, wrong. You cannot say you are so relieved. You have not been reading the Bible. I've read the Bible. The first thing that you must do before reading the Bible, say, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm here to spend time with you. Can I have fellowship with you? As I read your word, let my spirit man be saturated by your word. Am I talking to someone? If one, one, one of the biggest signs, I've seen that mostly in worshipers. When worshiping, God has become a chore. I want to put it to you. Angels are worshiping God day and night. They do not rest. 
David started a worship team. The most successful king ever. They worship God 24-7. In the sanctuary, the church never closed. When others were leaving, others were coming, worshiping, playing instruments, singing daily 24-7. That shows, that's why God says to David, is the man after my heart. Tell me. Ask yourself this question. When Jesus Christ looks into your heart, does he see the love of his life? Or does he see somebody who's spending time doing chores, Christian chores? Because we saw in the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ commended their chores. He said, I've seen that you labored I've seen that you are strong in doctrine. You are strong in the word. You are strong in worship. You are strong in doing these things. However, I have this against you. You have left your first love. He did not say you have lost. He did not say the first love is dead. He said you have left your first love. Meaning the first love is positional. It's a place where you are found. Hallelujah. And that place is a place where your heart is found. Just Christ in saying, I know where you were supposed to be. I know where we used to meet. Like when God called Adam and Eve, where are you? Where are you? They say, we were afraid because we were naked. Most of us have Put off the love, the first love that we had for Christ. We are naked. We are found wanting. That's the reason why it is easy for some to be discouraged, be offended, and hate the fellow brethren in the church. Why? Because the first love is gone. If, we're gonna, if we want the church to shake the world, if you want the church that will turn Alberton upside down, the church that will turn Ekurulen upside down, the church that will turn Houghton upside down, let us rekindle the first love for Christ. No one must be pushed to do things. No one must do things for pastor. No one must do things to be seen by fellow brethren. No one must, when your heart is fully sold out for Christ, can I, can I put it to you? You become an agent of miracles. You know, there are certain miracles that can only manifest inside the love of Christ. Okay, can I repeat that again? There are particular miracles that can only manifest inside the love of Christ when their heart is sold out for Christ. That heart, when it meditates, when it thinks about things, to Jesus Christ is prayer. Before you can even say in Jesus' name, that Jesus Christ says, the bride, my church is talking. The love of my life has a need. It's like the husband who loves his wife when, she, when he looks at her shoes. So no, no, no. The love of my life cannot be wearing these shoes. Before she asks, a new box of shoes is in the house. That's, what, that's how Jesus is to the church. Hallelujah. You know, if we go back to the word, we'll go back to the list. Let us go to Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. We were, we were still going, going back to the list. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. 
And now Israel, what does the Lord of God, the Lord you are God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. In other words, there are actions that Christians do outside their hearts. I am doing this because I want recognition in the church. No, I'm no longer going to come. I'm no longer going to come to the church. Why? No, pastor did not acknowledge me. Do you know what I did? You know, you know that day, my friend, I gave 2.5. And I saw him hugging someone who gave 150. Can you believe it, Tommy? Can you believe it? Can you believe? J just compare. 2.5 thousand I gave and pastor was greeting somebody who gave 150. And believe me, he only said to me, good morning, good morning, Mr. Dagad. And that was it. He never said anything to me. When the heart, when everything is done with a sold heart, out heart to God, whatever that you do in the church is between you and God. Hallelujah. Pastor doesn't feature anywhere. If he sees it, acknowledge it. Glory be to God. But in your private space, your, there will be gladness of your heart. Somebody asked me this question. Pastor, why do you benefit when you go and serve the very same people who, who once turned your, their back on you, their backs on you? Who has slandered you and you go there and serve them with gladness of the heart? I say to them, you know what? When I serve people, I don't see them. I don't see their actions. I don't remember their deeds. I hear what Jesus Christ wants me to do because I love him. What they did to me dies. Hallelujah. So the love of Christ will kill everything inside of you that, that is supposed to offend you. You cannot live in offense when you have Christ inside of you. You cannot have even the ability to count the wrongs. You know, I remember, you see, you see, you, you, you see Murendeni, yeah, one day he did this, I kept quiet. And the other day, let me tell you, in the parking lot, he passed me again, I kept quiet. And I was coming out of the bathroom. He did the same thing again, I kept quiet. This Sunday, I'm going to show him. Whom are you saving? Whom are you going for in the church? That's why Paul said to me, for me to live is what? To die. He is dead in whom? In Christ. The love of Christ causes you to die. The love of Christ will cause you to do what? You die in what? In self. Self dies. The love of Christ causes you to do what? To die. You need to look at this. Check the number of excuses that we have for not doing the work of God. Compares, compare them with the number of times that you have run to do your worldly chores. Compare them. I, you know, I cannot do this. You know, I, I don't want to disappoint my friend. I know Pastor is Sunday, but I promise my friend that we'll, we have, it's, it's golf day today. We'll be doing golf, and believe you me, they've been asking me for too long. The next Sunday uh, is my friend's birthday party. The other Sunday, you know, you know what? Uh, we have this tradition in the family, we gather on Sundays. 
And the other Sunday, you know, Pastor, I, I know that this whole mother has been coming to church, but I have to do overtime. I'm behind with my work. And when things don't go well, Pastor, I believe I'm being bewitched. Nothing in my life is going well. No. The love. Go back to the first love. When nothing can stand between you and God. Go back to that first love. You know, you see, there are certain things, as I said before, they don't need to be prayed for. They are positional. If it's raining, you don't pray for the rain to stop. You run to the house. If you, if you want to be dry, you run away to the house. So the position, your position will determine whether you are getting wet or not. If it's too hot, you can choose whether you want to remain in the sun or in the shadow. That's why Jesus Christ said, you have left the first love. You have left the first love. You know, I was saddened by a story of a pastor during lockdown who ended up being arrested. Not Pastor Mukuba, no. The church stopped doing everything for the pastor. The pastor does not work. The pastor depends on the church. They stopped doing like totally giving. And the pastor was so desperate. The pastor took some chairs because there was no bread in the house in the church and sold them. And when the church reopened, the very same member, the very same members who did nothing for the pastor opened the case against the pastor. And the pastor was arrested. But if we understand who the pastor is, the Bible says he's, he's the representative of who? Of Christ. He's standing there representing who? Christ. If you love Christ, you won't allow his servants to suffer. Hallelujah. I, there are certain families. I know them. You know, you can't tell them anything when it comes to pastors. They will go all out to make sure that the pastor gets something. But how can a church claims to love Christ and allow the servants of God to suffer by holding back what they're supposed to give to the church? I'm not preaching that. It did not happen to us. We are still blessed. We are waking, me and Pastor T. But the church does not work. This building does not work. So you understand? So the love of Christ, when you love Christ as you're supposed to, it will put you in a position where Christ will trust you as a funnel of finances. Hallelujah. He will know that if I take my finances to that man because of his love for me and my work, he will channel them to, to, the, wrong, to the right place. Am I talking to someone? But pastor, why are you talking about money? I'm going to tell you everything, the whole counsel of God. If you are not, if you are not comfortable with, 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 with what I'm saying, with love strong. Let us go to 2 Corinthians 9 7. No, let, let's start with 1 John 3 17. 1 John 3 17. You know, most of you, when you say, Jesus, I love you, his response will be liar. But whoever has this world goods and sees his brother in need 
and shut up his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? So, giving to your fellow brethren is a sign of how much you love Christ. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. Can you read 18? My little children, let us not love in the word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. 19. By this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Let, 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 let us read go down. You will see what love does. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God that and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do things that are pleasing to his sight. 20, 23, and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us the commandment. Many of us don't receive because we do not have love. Oh my God, if you can give me that Range Rover, Father, I will bless you forever in your heart. They will know who the real God is. If God give, give me that Range Rover. But God is saying, put me first. Put the love of God first. Don't live like the world. The world wants to put itself first. You know, one thing that I've learned about the love of God, the one who loves, who loves Jesus Christ, find it easier to love God's people. Do you know what? I, I cannot love Mr. Trusi and hate his children. Are we together? I cannot, I cannot love God and hate his children. That's the reason why the church loves, the world laughs at the church. They see the hatred that is in the church among the fellow brethren. How do you love, how do you hate your sister if God is our father, all of us? If you love the same God that we love, that's why God says, I see all your works. Yeah, you tithing. You are, you, are, you, are, you are doing everything. You are laboring. You are patient. Nevertheless, you have left the first love. Can we go back to Revelation? Randy, can we go back to Revelation 2 verse 5? 4 and 5. And, and how do we know again? When the love of God is dead in you, you strive for affirmation from the world rather than the approval from God. You strive for affirmation from the world. One thing that I've learned in the world, most things are being done on Sundays. I wanted my son to join a club, a Albertan football club. They play almost all their official matches on Sundays. I said for that, no. My son loves soccer. We'll find other ways of making him enjoy soccer, but I'm not going to compromise God for the world. Imagine I say, Randy, I'm taking you to the bus. Go and play your soccer game. We are going to church. What seed am I planting in him? I'm telling him, God comes second. Your extramural activities come first. Everything that the world does, if you can check today, is done on Sundays. Why is he doing that? And when we don't do what they do, they condemn us. 
The moment you strive for affirmation of the world, you don't feel good when the world does not affirm you. You have lost the first love. Who am I? No, I. You, you know what, Mr. Truth? I will come to church with you, but I'm not saying don't do things that you need. You know, sometimes me and Pastor T, we said, you know what, we, we, we are not here. We are going to, to, to rest. Imagine you waking up all the time, every Sunday. I'm here. It's okay. But when it becomes a lifestyle, Mr. Tusi, where are you? Uh, hey, Pastor, you understand, Mus, uh, my, baby, my baby cousin has a, has a birthday. And do you know they are so smart? They will make you an MC. <laughs> I was told we're not attacking. We you know that you love the church. And I'm the program director. Uh, you know, the whole family is depending upon me. You know, I cannot come. No, it is not the whole family depending upon you. Is the whole Satan deceiving you? Trying to steal away the love of Christ from you. Can you read five? Ten? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because you have left thy first life. Remember therefore when thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly. I will remove my, thy candlestick out of this place. Except thou repent. God is saying there is a chance for restoration. I did not teach everything. Repentance. Say, Father, we as a church, we are focused on everything else except you. We don't love our brethren out there. We call them names, sinners, prostitutes, killers. Jesus Christ it looks at them and says, these ones are made according to my image. How do you minister to someone that you have condemned? How do you share the word of God to someone that you have judged? Were you born again in the church? Did Jesus Christ find you in the church and save you in the church? No. He found you somewhere. Maybe you are doing worse things than what they are doing. But if you love Jesus Christ, you will see every soul as a potential preacher, as a potential worshiper, as a potential intercessor, as a potential Sunday school teacher, as a potential usher. You will see someone, as somebody who's got a potential to pray for you and be healed one day. Am I talking to someone tonight? Hallelujah. You, you, you won't judge them. Yes, what they're doing is wrong. But let the love of Christ arise in your heart and feel the pain that Jesus Christ will feel when he sees those souls going to hell. Knowing that if those souls die and go to hell, there is no return. And you are their only chance of redemption. You are their only chance of salvation. But if we love Christ as we should, we'll know that soul winning has got nothing to do with their position in the church. Soul winning has got nothing to do with how much you know the Bible. Soul winning has everything to do with your love for Christ. Because you don't want to see his image burning in hell. I remember I read a story in closing. If I say in closing again, say amen, pastor. I read a story of a man. He was a bridge operator. His wife has died of cancer. It was only him and his son. So every time when the train comes, he will exchange the bridges. It will become rail and then the train will pass and then it will become a car and then the cars will pass. One day, 
a train was coming carrying thousands of people, if not hundreds. And his son was playing where the bridge is supposed to go and lock. He was caught between a road and a hard place. He has to make a decision. Do I kill the thousands and save my son? Or do I kill my son and save the thousands? The train is approaching in a breathtaking speed and he's left with few seconds, if not few minutes, if not seconds to make that decision. He closed his eyes. He knew what he needed to do. That in that train, there are fathers and mothers. There are children who might be instant orphans. He decided to lower the bridge. In the process, the son could not get a chance to escape because there was no way that he could communicate with him. The son was crushed. The thousands were reading newspapers in the train. They didn't know what it cost for them, for the train to pass through. It cost the death of his only son. He was left alone. That's how much he loved his work. And I want to put it to you, that's what God did because he loved us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He chose his son to die on the cross so that the rest of us can have eternal life. Otherwise, our destiny, all of us, was the lake of fire because hell is real. All that God is asking for tonight, he's not asking for your son. He's not asking for your daughter. He's asking for your heart. Love me the way I loved you. For you have lost, you have left your first love. Love me. Love me. The, I'm, he, he does not want you to crucify anyone. He just wants your heart. Because he knows that when your heart is in the right place, the church will thrive. Hallelujah. And he says, remember therefore, thou art fallen, repent. I mean, how could Jesus Christ call the hardworking church fallen? He said, I've seen your labor. I've seen your perseverance. I've seen your patience. I've seen how much you hate sin. And yet, he said, because you have left thy first love, you have fallen. It's because anything that is done outside the love of Christ, we become hypocrites. We, it's easy for us to blame. But we love him because he loved us first. Hallelujah. Do you want, do you want your restoration? Restore the first love. Do you want your deliverance? Restore the first love. Do you want increase in your life? Love Jesus the way, the way you used to love him. Hallelujah. You know, you see, many who are running for miracles and all those prophets, false prophets, is because they have lost their love for Christ. They have replaced Christ with material. They want anyone who can give them instant miracles. But if you put back your heart to Christ, just like your son and your daughter, everything that you need is in Christ. I want us as a church, no matter how good you think you are, I want us tonight to repent. Say, Father, you promised that if you repent and do the first works, we will be restored or else you'll come unto us quickly. 
I don't want the or else. I would like us to be restored. Can you all stand up? Can you all stand up? I want you wherever you are. I love what David said in Psalm 42. That verse 1 is, as a dear pentest for the water brooks, so pens my soul for you, O God. All the Christ said, Father, I'm desperate for you. We need to be desperate for his love. Say, Father, I want to love you the way I've never loved before. Holy Spirit has the ability to release the supernatural love of Christ upon your heart. If we cry unto him, he will restore us. Let us all lift up our hands. Father, we have heard your word. Let us all pray. We do not have any other God who can restore us. You said it, mighty God, that Father, if we repent as a church, as the body of Christ, Father, we are repenting tonight that Father, restore unto us, mighty God, the first love. Holy Spirit, Rosani Mosari Bashiete, Perosani Masati Kashyandama, Rebabako Sonambi Kaziata. Holy Spirit, you are the only one who can restore us unto the first position, the first love that we had for Christ. Holy Spirit, you are the only one who can restore your church. The first love that we had for Christ. Holy Spirit, we pray tonight. We say as the dear pentest for the water brooks, so pens our souls for you, O oh God. Restore us, mighty God, as you forgive us, mighty God, from the sins of hypocrisy. Everything that you have done in our flesh, using your name, Lord Jesus Christ, everything that you have done, mighty God, pleasing ourselves, using your name, Father, we are repenting as a church tonight. We repent as a church. We say, Father, forgive us as the body of Christ for finding excuses not to be in a position where you can use us to advance your kingdom. Father, tonight, mighty God, we pray and repent. We say, Father, forgive us. Oh, Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, we have sinned against you. Forgive us, mighty God. Forgive us, mighty God. Forgive us, mighty God. Forgive and restore us, mighty God. Restore us, mighty God. Where our attention was stolen by Satan, where our focus was stolen by Satan, Father, we pray, mighty God, that restore the body of Christ. Let us have the ability to focus back, mighty God, to your work and to your purpose, Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we are repenting tonight. We have sinned against you. And only you alone. We acknowledge that we have fallen from the grace by losing the first love. Restore unto us the first love. Restore unto us the first love. You want to hear your heart beat again? Oh. We want to hear your mind again, mighty God. We want to hear your thoughts again, mighty God. As we lay our heads, mighty God, unto your chest. Loving you afresh, mighty God. We want to hear your heart beat. We want to move at the sound of your heart beat. Not the sound of our minds. Not the sound of the world. 
Father, we repent, mighty God, from being de de dictated by the world. Father, thank you for restoring us. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for restoring your church. Forgive us, mighty God. We have sinned against you. As a church, city to end of all nations, as a body of Christ. Yes, Lord, we have strayed and lost our first love. It has been all about us, mighty God. What we can do and what we cannot do. And Father, you promised, mighty God, that we can do all things through you, Christ, who strengthen us. Lord, even for those who are not here, we are standing the gap for them. Holy Spirit, restore your first love. Restore the first love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, mighty God, that you are the God who answers prayers. Restore us, Father. Holy Spirit, only you can restore us. Adam and Eve, when they lost you, Holy Spirit, they did not have the ability to love God. All that was left in them was the fear of God. Father, we pray for the holy fear, not destructive fear of God, not the fear that will separate us from the love of God. For Father, you said in your word that nothing shall separate us from your love. Father, restore your church. Restore us, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so much. Do not be afraid to be rejected because you love Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid of the rejection of the world because you love Jesus Christ. What shall a man gain if he gains the world and loses his soul? I rather keep my soul. I rather be rejected because I love Jesus Christ. I cannot leave the vitamins of my life are not the approvals of the world. He loved me. He died for me. Not even my father can die for me. But Jesus he found it worthy that his blood should be shed on the cross. How can I not love him the way I should? You cannot live in the state of offense, in the state of anger and unforgiveness and claim to love Jesus. It's not possible. You love yourself more than Jesus. Where self-love where self -love prevails, Offense will always take precedence. Thank you, Lord, for restoration. Thank you for restoration. We cannot do this without you, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us with might. By your spirit in our inner man. 
In Jesus' name, amen. I want you where you are, just, just begin to celebrate the restorative, the restorative power of the Holy Spirit. He's at work in your life. He's restoring you. I want to put it to you that when you are restored, when the love of Christ is fully birthed in your heart, you won't pray for everything. Things that we are praying for right now, if you can check most of our prayers, is because of selfishness. But when we pray with the love of Christ, you will know his heart. You will pray his heart. Not your heart. You will pray his mind. Not your mind. You will say, let your will be done. Not my will. Hallelujah. And you live a life of peace. Because the offense will die. When self dies, nobody can offend a dead person. <laughs> you can even go and kick the coffin. They'll keep quiet. When self dies and Christ is alive, you live the life of peace and peace forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to start celebrating your restoration. Just open your mouth and begin to celebrate. Say, Father, thank you that, that you have restored me. Thank you that you love me so much. We are not done. We are not done. We need to know what to do. Hallelujah. We need to know what to do. This was just the foundation. We need to know what to do. Hallelujah. The love of Christ will be, is restored back to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wherever you are at home who is watching me, I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you and he wants you to love him back. Hallelujah. God bless you.